Welcome everyone to Get Your Game On. This channel is devoted to those of you who really like immersive gaming, especially when it relates to virtual reality or, say, a motion simulating platform, or anything that makes that gaming experience just that little bit more special. If this is something you're into, hit that like and subscribe below and keep your eyes peeled for future installments. Today we're going to talk a little bit about virtual reality headsets and the latest one to hit the block, the Vive Pro 2. I spent a lot of time trying to decide if I wanted to upgrade to this thing from my trusty old HP Reverb G2. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts and experiences to hopefully inform you whether this is a good upgrade for you or not. Now you may notice the Pro 2 still has the plastic on the cameras and that's because it's going back. Stick around if you want to know why. Okay, I want to get one thing perfectly clear right from the beginning. I absolutely love my original Vive Pro. In fact, I still use it today for room scale VR. Those OLED screens have amazing color, and you just can't beat those dark blacks for immersion. Fortunately, it doesn't have the resolution you need for sim games like flight simulators and racing. So that's why I was hoping the Vive Pro 2 would fill that gap. Now you might ask, what was wrong with the HP Reverb G2, which I have been using for my simulations? And it's a really good device, but it does have a smaller FOV, and my glasses don't really fit in it well without feeling like they're crushing into my face. And then there's Windows Mixed Reality, which Windows Mixed Reality and I do not get along. It seems very clunky, the way it interfaces with Steam VR, and it always seems like there's a problem getting it to run properly. So my hope was the Vi Pro 2 would possibly feel more comfortable, be able to wear my glasses in it, and then may even perform a little bit better because it's not using Windows Mixed Reality. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. As soon as I put this thing on and jumped into my F18 and DCS, it felt like the performance just wasn't there. I did a little comparison to illustrate my point. So here we are in... DCS sitting in our F-18 cockpit. I really like using this uh, mission because it really pushes the hardware. As you can see, looking down deck with a lot of objects, the CPU frame timing is pretty high up there. And it has something to do with the flat shadowing in DCS. Now, performance was still fine. Everything looks good in the headset, but it definitely gives us a lot of red in that CPU frame timing. Now, keep in mind, this is a Ryzen 5900X and a 3080 Ti running this. All the settings are the same in DCS. I tried to make this as comparable as possible. Now my head movements aren't exact because I did each one independently, but they're close enough to illustrate the point. As you can see, those CPU frame timings have dropped back down now that we don't have as many objects on screen. Now, I also tried to bump the HP G2 resolution up to be as close to the Vive Pro 2 as possible, so we didn't have as big a resolution difference and neither headset has motion smoothing on. Um, so apples to apples as much as possible. The Vive Pro in Vive console is set to ultra, which gives us its maximum resolution at 90 hertz, which the HP Reverb G2 also runs at 90 hertz. So that's hopefully as even as possible. And in, as you can see here at the end, the HP Reverb G2, even using Windows Mixed Reality, still comes out about 10 frames a second ahead of the Vive Pro 2. And that's exactly what I felt when I played it initially. It felt like it wasn't quite as fast. Now, I thought maybe I can live with that. Uh, maybe there'll be a patch that comes out later. So I still was really wanting to like the Vive Pro 2. Again, I'm a fan of the original. So I kept testing and kept playing with it. Then I got into my flight simulators and my space simulators. I like to do a lot of flight simming uh, where I take off either early morning or I'm flying at sunset and I end up landing in the dark. So part of my flight is always at nighttime. And in space simulators, you're always in the dark. And boy, let me tell you, as soon as I took off from an airport when it was uh, pitch black outside, the glare was unbelievable. And that was really the deal breaker for me. I mean, you're going to have some glare, and you even have some in the HP. And here's some 
through the lens footage to show you what I saw. Now, through the lens stuff is really hard to do, and in fact, if you have any tips on how to do it even better, please leave them in the comments below. But, as you can see by the side-by-side -side comparison, obviously the visuals are a lot more clean when you have the headset on, but this does represent what I was seeing glare-wise pretty well. In addition to the extreme glare on the Vipro 2, I couldn't believe that it really highlighted the Fresnel rings whenever you looked at something bright with a dark background. It was almost like everything had a, a glowy circle around it, and it just took away from the immersion completely. So some final thoughts for those of you that may have seen some other Vive Pro 2 reviews. First and foremost, you have to get the thinner face gasket. The stock one is just too big, and you lose so much of your vertical field of view. It does feel like you're looking through a mail slot. But with the aftermarket thinner gasket, that reduced vertical field of view didn't bother me nearly as much as I thought it would. The other thing that I thought was interesting, even though this headset has more resolution, I found the G2 actually was a little clearer. I found myself leaning forward to read certain gauges in this headset that I didn't have to lean forward to see in my HP Reverb G2. I think that's because the G2 has a smaller field of view, so you actually have more pixel density. Uh, in that area. Um, the colors of this headset are very good. Uh, the darks seem to be darker than on the G2. Still nowhere near OLED levels, but they are a little darker in comparison to the HP. Um, I did notice some black crush, however, that I did not notice in the HP Reverb G2. Also, the panels being good, doesn't really matter when the lenses give you so much glare. So the best panels in the world don't really help if you've got bad lenses. So overall, this thing was close for me. It almost made it, but there's just too much wrong with the lenses for me to be happy keeping this headset. So it's going back. So those are just some of my experiences with the HP Reverb G2 and the new Vive Pro 2. Now, obviously, everybody's experience is going to be a little different in VR based on your head shape and your eye placement. But hopefully my experiences in this video can help some of you out there make that decision whether the Vive Pro 2 is right for you. Again, I really, really wanted to like this headset, but for me, it just wasn't quite good enough. So until next time, take care.